Need a new effect for your next video? Try out this glowing eye effect in After Effects. Quick little intro for this video. I'm uploading every single day, the whole entire month of May on YouTube, and then also on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts. So if you're not following me on those social media platforms or you're not subscribed here on the channel, be sure to do that. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of editing sauce throughout this month. So hopefully you guys can get a lot of value out of that. If you could do me a favor before we get into this video, because it's gonna be a lot of work doing this this month, drop a like on the video and uh, let's get into it. So to get started, go up to the pen tool and then zoom in on your subject. I use H to move around and then make sure you're selected on that video layer itself and then mask around your subject's eyes. Then go down to the mask and make sure it says none and then do it for the other eye as well. After that, go to the tracker window, make sure you're selected on that mask down below and then I do position, scale and rotation and then just click analyze forward and it should track the mask to your subject's eye pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfect and I wouldn't worry about it jittering a little bit because I do it in this video as well. Once that's done, go back to the first frame and click on that second mask and then also track it the exact same way you just did. Then go ahead and make a new solid layer. And this is where you can choose the color of the eye effect. So I just went with white, I think it looks good. And then control clicking on both of these masks. So you can select them both at the same time and clicking control C and then clicking control V onto that new solid layer. And then you're going to want to go and change the mask from say none to add. And now you should have something that looks similar to this. Don't worry if it doesn't look good yet, we still gotta add a lot of sauce. The next step is to just feather the mask a little bit. So go to the mask options and then feather it down. I used like 10 in this video, but just play around with it, see what works for you. And then this is where the majority of the effects gonna come from. I use Sapphire Rays. You could also use Universe Shine, I believe it's called. They're both gonna give you similar looks. And then I like to drag the rays right to the center of the face, just so we can kind of get an idea of what we're doing when we're tweaking the settings. Now this part's all gonna be personal preference, but I like to change the ray length up a bit, play with the ray brightness. If you go down to shimmer and play with that, it gives it a little bit more of like a flickering kind of effect. And now we have something a little bit more like what we actually want. So now it's time to add the animation to the shine of the eyes. And you can do that by keyframing the center of the rays. So I like to start with it either facing up or facing down. You could do whatever you want left to right. Just keyframe it in one spot, then go to the end and keyframe it so that it actually moves throughout your clip. To make it pop a little bit more, I'd recommend adding some kind of glow. I'm gonna go ahead and use deep glow, but you can use universe glow, the built-in glow and After Effects. It doesn't really matter. They're all gonna do roughly the same thing. Some of the settings I like to change is the intensity of the glow and also the radius so it's not like over blown out. I think it looks good toned down a little bit more but it's all personal preference. And then let's go ahead and add sapphire flicker on. If you don't have sapphire you can keyframe the opacity of that ray layer up and down from 0 to 100 and kind of randomize it but sapphire flicker saves you a lot of time so that's what I'm going to use. I like playing with the amplitude which is basically how light or dark something is and how noticeable the actual ray flickering is going to be. And then the other setting I play with is random frequency which is basically just how fast it's gonna flicker back and forth. Then once you've got something you like, I like to add flicker onto that background layer as well, the actual layer of the video clip. That way it feels a little bit more interactive and kind of blends the effect. Now it's time to add a little bit extra sauce and kind of finalize this effect. So I'm gonna start off by coloring the footage. I'm actually using my Filmic LUT for my Essentials Bundle. If you're interested, I'll have it linked down below. Basically, you just wanna add a little bit more contrast and make it feel more grungy. I'm gonna turn down the intensity on the LUT a little bit, play with the curves, and then I'm also gonna add a vignette. That way there's just a little bit of like a black kind of like shadow around the outside of the video. Then I'm gonna add on Dehancer. I like using Dehancer a lot. I think it adds a lot of extra sauce and just helps finalize like every effect. I've been using it like crazy recently. I'll have that link down below as well and my promo code. And then I like to uncheck the enable on the film look, add some kind of grain. I like to tone it down a little bit. Halations have been something that I like playing with a lot. I think it looks really good in most footage. You'll have to play with it and see what you like. And then also adding some kind of bloom, but I think I'm going to turn it down a little bit because it just seemed a little bit too intense on this footage. And a little tip if you're using Dehancer, if you click check mask mode, you can kind of see what it's actually doing to the footage without having to like guess and like turn it down. And then let's add a little bit more vignette. I don't know. I think it looks cool. So why not? After that, I'm gonna add some optics compensation onto our clip. Make sure to click reverse lens distortion. That way it zooms in instead of zooming out like a ball. You'll see what happens if you don't have it checked. And then I'm gonna keyframe the position and scale just to give it a little bit more animation. If you turn on these proportional grids, you can kind of get a better idea of where the exact center of your footage is. I think it helps out a lot. This part's gonna be very dependent on your footage and actually what you have to work with. So just play around with it, see what you like. I added a quick zoom out with optics compensation and also just 
position and scale. I think that looks pretty good. Make sure when you're using optics compensation, if the compensation isn't coming from the direct center, you can actually change the center by clicking view center. You can also keyframe that if you want. I didn't do it here, but you can. That way the optics compensation is coming from the center of the person's face. And then I'm gonna make an adjustment layer and add on a vertical hit with a flash from Shake Sauce. Also have that link down below. Just to add a little bit more energy and kind of have that effect come in and just kind of finish off a little bit of the effect. I'm gonna play with the settings and line it up properly. And then I'm also just going to make another adjustment layer on top and go to the light keyframe, the XY shake, and just have that play throughout so it has a little bit more of that energy and just kind of flow to the effect as a whole. I think it was a little too intense at first, so I just turned down the settings a bit. That way it's a little bit more subtle. And then finally, I'm gonna make an adjustment layer and I'm gonna copy the two coloring effects that I added on, Lumetri Color and Enhancer. I'm actually gonna click Control X to cut them and paste it onto that adjustment layer because I'm gonna be adding RSMB. And when I add RSMB, I always make sure to add it to the top before Dehancer. That way the blur happens and then there's grain added on top. Whereas if you had RSMB below Dehancer, it would actually blur the grain a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of that effect, but you can play around with it and see what you like. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like the video. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to be subscribed because like I said, I'm gonna be uploading every single day for the month of May, not only on YouTube, but on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. So if you're not following me on those other platforms, be sure to do that. It's just at Brian Delmata, just like my YouTube. If you have any tutorial ideas, drop them down in the comments below. With all these tutorials going up this month, that means a lot of project files are gonna be uploaded on my Patreon. So if you're interested in project files, I'll have a Patreon link down below, as well as all the editing packs and stuff that I used in this video. Also, every single week on Sunday, I stream and review your music videos. That's either gonna be on YouTube or Twitch. So be sure to follow me on Twitch. But more recently, I've been streaming on YouTube, but just look out for it. If you follow my Instagram, you'll see where I'm gonna be streaming that week. So if you want your video reviewed, basically you submit your video to be reviewed by me. Chat and I rate it one out of 10. And then at the end, I pick the top three videos of the day and then chat votes on the number one. And that person wins an editing pack. We might actually be giving away some Shake Sauce rugs in the future here this month. So if you haven't tuned into one of those streams, come check it out. It's pretty fun. I have a good time every Sunday. It seems like chat enjoys it. Yeah, I'm excited for this month. It's definitely gonna be a grind, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna learn a lot of stuff. You guys are gonna learn a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'll see you guys here on YouTube tomorrow. Peace.